measured in many different ways, but that town, much of that town, has been destroyed by the hurricane. There were hundreds of people over in front of the courthouse who sat there for six, seven, eight hours waiting to get food. That's all they want is food. They're not even talking about anything else. They have no electricity in the town, and uh, other utilities are out, telephones are out. And the mayor of, of the town, Sam Jones, says he's proud of one fact, that there hasn't been one incident of looting since the uh, hurricane four days ago. So these people are struggling, and they're suffering greatly. Uh, they're supporting each other. They're getting support from the federal government and National Guard troops that the governor of Louisiana sent in there. Jim, are you hearing cries of frustration there in Louisiana about the, the government's slow response to the crisis, as we heard in Miami? Only localized cries, like we've been here for three hours, we don't know why this is taking so long to get processed, to get food, but generally speaking, when you go into a, a town like Franklin, Louisiana, the first thing you notice is that long lines of trucks are hauling debris out of town already, and you can hear the sound of, of chainsaws sawing away all the dead wood. Not much time for complaints because everybody seems to be too busy just trying to dig out from under the hurricane damage. Right, we understand. Jim Cummins, thank you tonight from Lafayette, Lafayette. Louisiana. Still to come on NBC Nightly News, we'll join the candidates on the campaign trail in the South and in small town America. On focus tonight are children, our schools, and what needs to be done. When it gets this hot, you'd better get to Sears. I hear my battery gets baked. Only Sears has the Die Hard. In demanding tests for starting power, Die Hard performed three times better than industry standards. This time, I'm getting a Die Hard. You can count on me. Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Raisin Bran is Raisin Bran. What's this? Total Raisin Bran, huh? It has 100% of lots of vitamins and minerals. Kellogg's has only one. I'm surprised. Total Raisin Bran with the total difference. Whirlpool thinks a great refrigerator is one you barely even notice. Solidly built to last for years so you can all but ignore it. If you want a refrigerator so well built you don't have to think about it, think about Whirlpool. President Bush reacted sharply today to charges that federal aid to Florida's, Florida's hurricane victims has been too little, too late, and may be politically inspired. NBC's John Cochran is at the White House. John? Deborah, despite heavy criticism of the federal relief effort, the president said late today he thinks the relief effort has been impressive, especially from the military, and he thinks history will agree with him. Bush briefly returned from Camp David for a disaster report from his top relief officials. Florida is a key state for his re-election hopes, but he bridles when anyone tries to connect the relief effort to politics. I don't even think about the politics of it. We're trying to help people. And I see a bunch of people running around interviewing people who've been thrown out of their homes by a natural disaster saying, how does the politics work? Good heavens. We're in an honor here. Can't we help people without having somebody try to put a political interpretation on it? Earlier today, Bill Clinton said he did not want to criticize Bush. But Clinton also said there should eventually be an investigation into charges that the federal government responded too slowly. That's what's being debated now. And uh, I hated very much yesterday to see uh, the president pointing the finger at the governor and all of that sort of stuff going on. Clinton need not have hated it because Bush never did it. Quite the opposite. Bush has tried to avoid finger pointing, which would make him look less presidential. And as for Clinton's call for an investigation... Well, I don't respond to Governor Clinton on these matters. We have a national emergency here, and we're trying to get this job done. And Bush's aides think the relief effort is going well enough for him to resume campaign travel by the middle of next week. Deborah? Thanks, John. Well, for his part, Bill Clinton was concentrating on the campaign today in the South. John Dancy is traveling with the Democratic candidate. Clinton was home in Arkansas today, teary-eyed at his reception by his state's Democratic convention, but still savoring his bus tour across the neighboring state of Texas. Clinton is trying to revitalize Democrats past and present. Texas Hispanics, 25% of the population, traditionally vote Democratic. They are an essential base. We're going to win Texas and we're going to win the White House this year. Here's why Democrats believe that. 
Corsicana, Texas, one stop on Clinton's tour. Ron Blackwell is a restaurant owner. Seven's the main drag here, and there's probably 40 or 50 businesses that have closed just in the last, say, four or five years. David Fondren is a teacher. They just shut down a plant uh, just a couple of days ago, a gypsum plant. We've lost Wolf Brand Chili, we lost Hager Slacks, Hughes Tools, you name it, we've lost it. There's just not much going on. There is a huge pool of economic anger in these small towns, and Clinton is trying to exploit it. The census figures literally show that two-thirds of our people are working longer for less money than they were making 10 years ago. Is that true here? That gets to people like yeah, David Fondra. I voted Republican. I voted for uh, Reagan and Bush the first time, and uh, I don't know this time. I just don't know if uh, the town can stand for more years the way it is. In the heart of America, Clinton is finding the hurt of America, hard times. The great imponderable of this campaign is whether this will translate to votes in November. John Danzig, NBC News, with the Clinton campaign in Athens, Texas. Meanwhile, Vice President Dan Quayle is pursuing the votes of people with basic beliefs. Church on Sunday, sports for young people, conservative lifestyles. Tom Pettit is following the Vice President. Vice President Quayle campaigned today at the Little League World Series in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Little League is important to Dan Quayle's view of America. We had Saturday night basketball, Friday night uh, football. We had church on Sunday. Little League. Quayle also likes working obscure small towns in the South. This is my kind of country. Uh, the, the people here to identify with what we've been uh, talking about. To talk to people, talk to a lot of people are not expecting to, to see us. The First Baptist Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a, a typical Sunday for the Quail family. <laughs> Church on Sunday, uh, every Sunday. Ocala, Florida. The Quail campaign stop begins to resemble Disney World Main Street. The crowd's predominantly white. A quail official says he has been in many ghetto areas, but hasn't been there lately because there aren't many Republican votes there. Tuesday, North Carolina by train. No dirty city, no urban decay, no problem. Quail said High Point reminded him of his hometown in Indiana. Why is quail avoiding the big cities? The strategy is keep him away from places he can do harm. The challenge before us in this presidential campaign is, is to give a vision of the future. Right now, he is presenting his vision to the America of the past, small town America. Tom Pettit, NBC News, Washington. In a moment, America's schools. Tom Brokaw looks at the challenges. So you just got a cash advance, did you? Too bad you used an ordinary credit card because you could be carrying some very heavy interest charges why not carry the discover card just pay your full monthly balance and a small transaction fee and we'll forget the interest which means our money comes with no strings attached it pays to discover now you don't need a prescription to get prescription strength medicine for itches and rashes introducing new maximum strength cord aid now with twice the healing medicine. New Maximum Strength Cord Aid. Prescription strength without a prescription. You make me feel so young. Promise Extra Light Spread. Half the saturated fat and calories of margarine and a taste you'll enjoy with all your heart. You make me feel so young. Now Promise Extra Light in sticks. Get heart smart. The fresher the vegetable, the fresher the salad. And now there's a fat-free dressing that tastes just as fresh. New good seasons for fat-free dressing. The fat-free you make fresh with no oil. Because the best fat-free is the fresh fat-free. Who has the advanced training and equipment to take care of the advanced technology on your GM vehicle? You know who. Mr. Goodwrench. The smart choice for your smart car. On Focus tonight, we look at a most vital part of our society, our schools. This week, NBC News, in conjunction with USA Today, has been exploring ways of solving the many problems in our schools. Tonight, Tom Brokaw shows us the challenges that teachers at one school are facing. 
It's not going to be easy. Well, nine, sixteen. Our next one. At the Elwood School in Huntington, New York, children learn through play. Day A A. Kindergarten teacher Janet Macro is an expert at making a game of learning, but it's getting harder every year. She sees fewer and fewer children coming to school with the skills necessary to learn. David will recite nursery rhymes, and more than 50 or 60 percent of the class will look at you with, "What? Never heard of that? What do you mean, Little Miss Muffet?" Start at the top. No, the top. Good girl. Very nice. Not so long ago, children starting kindergarten had a vocabulary of 4,000 words. E -E ah, good. Now, many start with only about a fourth of that. At home, no one is talking to them or reading to them. All right, let's go wipe up. Before she can start teaching, Janet Macro has to figure out just how much each child knows. Does anyone know the sound that D makes? And one out of five of these children just doesn't understand. When the words stand up, come, follow me. Any simple commands that you can train your dog to do are not being responded to by children. Then you wait and you see if it really was lack of understanding, lack of readiness. Readiness involves more than just language skills. School principal Dr. Alan Van says a child needs social, emotional, and physical nurturing to be prepared to learn. I don't know that schools can meet all of these children's needs. For example, this boy came in and was complaining of a stomachache, and I said, when did you eat last? And he said, I had lunch yesterday, and I got half a bagel with cream cheese. I brought it into him. He ate his half a bagel. There went the stomachache. The child was fine. It's being mommy. It's being daddy. Just study. Okay. It's being psychologist, social worker, nurse. All right. Bye bye. I think that for many of these children, by the time they get to school, it's already too late. Oh. For too long now, we have taken our education system for granted. And in so doing, we have failed it more than it has failed us. Change is coming to the American classroom, still too slowly and still too episodically. But change without commitment is not enough. And later tonight, Tom Brokaw reports on some schools that are making a difference on the Brokaw Report. America schools pass or fail. That's tonight at 10 Eastern. The Infiniti G20 has been described as one of the best handling luxury sedans in the world. But what comes with the car is just as impressive as what's inside of it like the 24-hour roadside assistance program to make sure you're never alone. Because no man is an island, even if she lives on one. Hello. I'd like to talk to you about an invisible problem, the invisible bacteria that cause nasty denture odor. Fortunately, antibacterial Epident not only cleans the stains you can see, it kills the odor-causing bacteria you can't for clean, fresh dentures. So while the problem may be invisible, the solution is clearly Epident. Darling, we're on TV. Antibacterial Epident cleans what you can see and what you can't. Day after day, you make those glasses of thick Metamucil disappear. Why not make them all disappear with FiberCon? Doctor recommended FiberCon gives you the same fiber regularity in tablets. Easy to swallow tablets. Get Doctor recommended FiberCon. Hi, it's of all the things around your house that need batteries, there's one thing that needs a good, fresh battery most of all. See your Allstate agent for a free home fire safety brochure. And please, check the battery in your smoke detector often. For painful gas, which would you choose? Your antacid or Gas-X, the tablet made for gas? It's extra strength, 100% cymethicone, to fight gas faster. Faster than your antacid. Fight gas right with Gas-X. The FBI released figures today that back up what every American knows. There's been an enormous increase in violent crime in recent years. The statistics show that in the past decade, crimes of violence went up 33%.
those committed by juveniles rose by more than 25 percent. Time now to look at some of the stories that made news this past week. This was the last car off the line as a GM plant shut down for good in California. 2,600 people out of work as new government figures confirm that the economic recovery has been very slow. American, British and French fighter jets started patrolling southern Iraq to protect Shiite Muslims in that region from Iraqi air attacks. So far, no confrontation. At the latest round of Middle East peace talks in Washington, Israel presented new proposals for self-rule by the Palestinians. The Palestinians said they did not go far enough. The United States began its airlift of food to Somalia to feed the millions who are facing starvation there. The United Nations voted to send 3,000 troops to guard the food. And in London, there was talk of peace and an international conference on ending the fighting in the former Yugoslavia, a pledge by the Serbs to stop their siege of Bosnia. The leader of the Serbs in Bosnia said today his troops would withdraw from at least one city and that pullouts from other cities would follow. But in the war zone, there are few signs that peace is near. Mike Betcher is in Bosnia. Somehow, the message always seems to get lost on its way here. If there is a plan to win the fighting, Serbian fighters haven't heard about it. The chain of command from the top leadership to the Serbs on the front line outside of Sarajevo is twisted and tangled at best. There is no guarantee that any order to give up the fight would be obeyed. The bitterest man the front lines. They have lost their homes or lost their families to their enemies, Muslims and Croats. They will fight until they take back what is theirs, or short of that, take what is left. Now we are enemies. A couple of months ago, we were friends. We worked together. We go to restaurant together. But now we are enemy. From their perches, they have a clear view and a clear shot toward Sarajevo. Gunfire does not move them. Neither does talk of peace. They speak in the twisted logic of the war-weary. The objective of this war is peace, declares one soldier whose Sarajevo home is under Muslim control. His comrade is not interested in giving up what has been won. This place flowed with blood. Fourteen Serbs died here, he recalls. It would be unacceptable to the men who have died to give in. Within earshot of the shelling are 10,000 Serbian refugees who have fled to Pali, the Serbian's provisional capital in Bosnia. Outside an Orthodox church, they wait to buy candles, which will be lit in honor of their family's dead. No one buys less than a handful. Slobodan Ninkovic bought his share. He's had his share of war. I hope good sense prevails, he says, because people are sick of war, the fighting, the killing, the destruction. The advance of peace, however, is thwarted by thousands of man-made barriers. A candle lit to honor a dead son or father only adds another layer to a wall whose foundation, hatred, is not easily penetrated. Mike Betcher, NBC News, Polly. In a moment, we'll look back on Hurricane Andrew, the sights and sounds of destruction. Charmin's not squeezably soft. Maybe the fluffer broke down. Oh, no. We fluffed every sheet of Charmin for a deep-down squeezable softness. So if it's not squeezable... It's not Charmin. Hey, what's this? That's it. You fixed the fluffer. It's squeezable again. So is this cheap, new potpourri scented Charmin. The scent's put on the core, not the paper. Makes sense to me. Charmin's so squeezable. Because it's so squeezable. Whirlpool thinks a great refrigerator is one you barely even notice. Solidly built to last for years so you can all but ignore it. If you want a refrigerator so well built you don't have to think about it, think about Whirlpool. It's night and day the difference Correctol makes when I'm irregular. Correctol is the gentlewoman's laxative that works predictably overnight. No wonder more women trust it. Correctol. Gently, predictably, overnight. Poly Shades by Minwax. It's a stroke of genius. Poly Shades is rich stain and polyurethane protection in one. Poly Shades gives wood a beautiful protective finish in half the time. Poly Shades by Minwax. To help relieve her heartburn, regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt, but his antacid is Tums, and Tums has Tums. calcium. Something my body needs anyway. 
I like that. It's a very sophisticated system. You're probably better off taking it to the GM dealership. We haven't got that kind of equipment here. Best bet's the dealership. Pretty tricky stuff. Out of our league. Sorry. Try the dealership. The dealership. The GM dealership. By now, you've probably heard a lot of numbers involving Hurricane Andrew. More than 30 deaths blamed on the storm, an estimated 80 to 90,000 homes destroyed or damaged. The cost of the disaster in Florida alone could reach $30 billion. But the numbers do not begin to describe the magnitude of this tragedy. We want to look back tonight at what it was like this past week. Let's take a look right now. Tropical Storm Andrew strengthening 60 mile per hour winds moving to the northwest at 10. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on this one for sure. It was so frightening. It's hard to describe what I felt here. Two freight trains going through here. The police building was demolished to the ground. I thought we were going to so die. Everything I started saying started. prayers. With me, I'm homeless completely. I don't have anything. I mean, nothing completely nothing, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, the, the storm just cut a path uh, in South Miami. Uh, we have uh, 12 uh, confirmed uh, uh, fatalities now, deaths. The core of the hurricane is going to come into the Louisiana area. Uh, we don't see anything that's going to cause it to weaken dramatically. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just going north. And I grabbed my wife and we started trying to get to the bathroom and by that time the, the wall came down on top of us. My wife was trapped under me. And uh and uh it just took a while, you know. We got out. Makes me sick. This is the only thing I ever owned. I don't have anything. 14 years building this and uh, it's all it's all gone. It's all gone. Uh, it's all gone. Kids were saying, Mommy, what happened? Why is doing this to us? We did come out of it uh, without a scratch, and uh, we're thankful for that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I guess they're over again. That's nightly news for this Saturday. Join Tom Brokaw later tonight for his special report on America's schools. I'm Deborah Roberts. See you tomorrow night. Airborne with a light flight trauma unit as they attempt to rescue a woman fighting for her life. How you doing in there? Okay. Meet the real life heroes who save lives in those desperate minutes before time runs out. Had he not been transported by this helicopter, I'm sure he would have been dead. Jane Pauley, Stone Phillips on an all new Dateline NBC Tuesday. Next week on Today, television's newest Emmy winners. And Oprah Winfrey, Jason Robards, Lily Tomlin, and Olympic gold medalist Jennifer Capriati. Join us next week on Today. Coming up from your 24-hour news source. A former Iowan is uh, reportedly killed during that week-long standoff in Idaho. By Mary Mills, I'll have details. This man officially charged with the murder of former Des Moines attorney Kevin Kelly. And another wedding out at the Iowa State Fair. I'm Courtney Maxwell. I'll have a fair-style wedding coming up. Jerry Chance says a chance of rain tonight. And Pat with a preview of the kickoff classic. All next on the News at 6. It's the Dodge factory authorized clearance. Get 500 cash back on select caravans. Put a new Dodge in your garage. Plus, get air conditioning at no extra charge on caravans. Put a new Dodge in your garage. Dodge Caravan is America's best selling minivan. List price as low as $13,766 after cash back. Put a new Dodge in, Dodge in your garage. And if you don't have a garage for your new Dodge, build one. See your nearest Dodge dealer today. Oh, mama, don't feed me no baloney. No ham and cheese. I want something hot and hearty. I want a man which please don't feed me no baloney. I want a man which please. I'm not talking turkey. I want a bigger deal. I don't feed me just a sandwich. I want a man which meal don't feed me no baloney. I want a man which meal. I want a man which meal. Live from WHO TV 13.
where the news comes first 24 hours a day. Scott Pope, Therese Thompson, Pat Paris with sports, and Jerry Reno with the weather. This is News Center 13 at 6. The FBI says a former Iowan holdup in Idaho may be close to surrender. They've just learned his wife has been dead for a week. And Russell Lund Jr. behind bars today. He's officially charged in the murders of his estranged wife and Iowa attorney Kevin Kelly. Good evening and thank you for joining us. We'll have more on the arrest of Russell Lund Jr. in just a minute. But we begin tonight with the latest information from Naples, Idaho, where a former Iowan continues his standoff with federal agents. Former Jefferson resident Randy Weaver remains holed up in a mountain cabin near Naples, where he has held authorities at bay for more than a week. Today, third-party presidential candidate Bo Greitz arrived in Naples and was allowed inside the cabin by Weaver. Late this afternoon, Greitz emerged from the cabin and told authorities that Weaver has been wounded and wants a day or so to decide whether or not he will give himself up. Weaver's wife, Vicki, their son, Sam, and a friend of theirs were reportedly shot during a shootout with authorities last weekend. And as we said, neither Sam nor Vicki Weaver survived. News of Vicki's death hits home especially hard for residents of Colville, where she grew up. News Center 13's Mary Mills, just back from there, joins us now from the newsroom with the latest. Well, Scott, friends and relatives of Vicki Weaver are understandably shocked and saddened to hear the news of her death. They were hoping for a peaceful resolution to the standoff. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. FBI officials say that Weaver was killed during a shootout, that a bullet apparently went through the cabin door and struck her. Her parents, Dave and Jean Jordison, have been in Idaho for a week now, but several other uh, relatives have been trying to keep tabs on the situation from Colville, which is just outside Fort Dodge. It's here where Vicki grew up, and while many haven't seen her since she left Iowa nearly 10 years ago, they say they can't help but feel for her parents. If you put yourself in that position and say my daughter was in that position when she was older, you would, you would be horrified. Our prayers and everything are with the family and uh, hope that it's going to be not too hard to cope with everything, but it's a little hard to understand why it's happening. But. Now, Randy Weaver's parents, who are from Jefferson, are also in Idaho. We're told that neither they nor Vicki's parents have been allowed anywhere near the cabin they're said to be very frustrated with the FBI that they're having a tough time getting any information on anything. Therese? All right, Mary, most reporting for us. Thank you. Therese? Our other top story tonight, an arrest in the Kevin Kelly murder case. Police in Minnetonka, Minnesota, have arrested and charged Russell Lund Jr. with the crime. Lund has been the prime suspect in the case from the beginning, and Lund is accused in the shooting deaths of former Iowa legislator Kevin Kelly and Lund's estranged wife, Barbara. Now, both bodies were found in Lund's Minnetonka home. Lund will remain in custody pending a formal bond hearing on Monday. It's been nearly a week now since 21-year-old Tammy Zawicki turned up missing from her car on I-80, but her classmates remain undaunted. Grinnell College students continued their efforts today. We found two at a Des Moines area truck stop talking with truckers and passing out pictures of Tammy. These students were joined in the search yesterday by Northwestern University students. That's where Zawicki's brother attends school. Now with mass mailings and the travel efforts, this search has gone nationwide. Last night we told you that the hy V grocery store chain was shipping in $20,000 for hurricane relief in Florida. Well, Dolls Food Stores are doing their part with a little help from you. Shopping carts have been set up at all Dolls Stores for donated food that will be shipped to relief centers in Florida and Louisiana. Now, customers who wish to donate should buy non-perishable food items and simply place them in the carts. Now, a lot of you have been calling us asking how you can help. We've made it easy to get donation information. Simply call our in-touch line. The number is 246-5600 and then punch in category 2113. In case you missed NBC Nightly News, here's the latest on the relief efforts in South Florida. The federal government announced today that over 14,000 troops will help victims of Hurricane Andrew. Meanwhile, residents from across South Florida are lending their southern neighbors a hand at the Homestead Church of God. Volunteers from all over the state are replacing their church's roof that was blown away by Hurricane Andrew. Inside, among the rubble, volunteers are handing out donated food supplies to the needy. Doctors from Miami's Children's Hospital arrived in Homestead and set up a makeshift hospital to help South Florida well, residents who need assistance. The hospital is set up to handle any medical emergency that a normal hospital could, but some of the more seriously injured patients are being transported to hospitals in North Miami. No one can complain about the weather we've been having here in central Iowa. Let's go to Jerry Reno in the Weather Center for our first look at the forecast. Jerry?
Yeah, and it is not too bad. If you like windy weather, the winds have switched. The cold front has moved through the state. Uh, currently in Des Moines, we have 79 degrees, and we have some gusty northwest winds. There's also a possibility of some storms, but most of those will be up in the northeast corner of the state and adjacent areas of Wisconsin. So there is a severe thunderstorm watch posted for a four-county area there until midnight tonight. For us, you can look for partly cloudy skies, just a slight chance of showers here in central Iowa. Those northwest winds diminishing to 10 to 20 miles an hour and a low near 55 by early tomorrow morning and look for some very pleasant weather for the next couple of days. Complete details when we come back. All right, Jerry, with temperatures like we had this afternoon, I'm not going to complain about the wind. <laughs> Thanks a lot. A gorgeous day for a special rally in Des Moines. When Iowans go to the polls in November, on the ballot will be Amendment 1 proposal. Now, people who support it gather to demonstrate their support. What do you say? Let's go, Downtown Des Moines was the site of a rally and march this morning in support of Amendment No. 1, equality for men and women. If passed, it will change Article 1 of the Iowa Constitution to say all men and women are by nature free and equal. Now, the previous attempt at passing the ERA amendment was unsuccessful, and many of the people that worked on the last campaign were here again today in hopes of seeing the amendment passed this time around. I worked on the previous campaign. I know how, uh, how deep the opposition is, that uh, that is a matter of power and control, and so I want to do everything I can to help it pass this time. It may be totally symbolic, but it is important that uh, women be mentioned in the Constitution. People of all ages, races, and gender turned out for the 10K walk and a rally on Nolan Plaza to raise money for their cause. How come we're marching today? Well, because, uh, because uh, men are not free unless women are free. Currently, Iowa is the only state in the country that will vote on the ERA amendment in November, and if it passes, Iowa will join over a dozen states with equal rights provisions in their constitution. Well, still to come from News Center 13, first sil a silver in Barcelona, and today another big day for Des Moines native Tosh Kaiser. In another wedding, a couple is getting married right now at the first church here at the Iowa State Fair. I'm Courtney Maxwell. I'll have that story coming up next. Visit the Iowa State Fair now and discover why Hot Spring Spas is bubbling with excitement. The warm, penetrating massage of Hot Spring Portable Spas is stealing the show. Hot Spring Spas is bubbling with excitement. What's clear? What isn't? out September 4th. This summer, why not get away to the fun and excitement that awaits you on the mighty Mississippi? The Dubuque Casino Bell and the Mississippi Bell 2 Casino offer the best in live entertainment and fine food, including our famous succulent prime rib. An air of romance is sure to surround you on this fabulous cruise. Join the fun aboard the Dubuque Casino Bell and the Mississippi Bell 2 Casino. Call 1-800-426-5591 for reservations today. Can you read this? If you can, you're lucky. An estimated 50,000 Americans will lose their sight this year. But you can help by participating in a shot in the dark. This annual event will be held Friday, September 11th at Willow Creek Golf Course. Enter your team today. Okay, all you baseball know-it-alls, it's time for the WHO TV 13 and Wendy's Baseball Sports Quiz. Every Sunday from August 9th through the 30th, I'll ask a baseball trivia question during Sunday night's New Center 13 at 10. Go to your participating Wendy's, pick up a form, and register your answer. The winner will be announced on the following Fridays, live at 5. Winners each week will receive one night stay at the Park Place Hotel in Kansas City and tickets to see a Kansas City Royals game. So step up to the plate, Central Iowa, and prove your baseball trivia knowledge. Welcome back. We've only got about a day and a half left of the 92 Iowa State Fair. And if the weather holds, it should be a busy weekend at the fairgrounds, of course, with plenty to see and hear. 
The Scottish Heritage Pipe and Drum Corps drew a big crowd along the Grand Concourse today. They have a distinctly Scottish sound, but all of the group's members are from Iowa. If you're strolling up and down the concourse, be on the lookout for Zeke and his Model A Hillbilly. Zeke is actually Sonny Taylor of Humansville, Missouri. He's been entertaining fairgoers all week. And if you need to take a break but don't want to miss any of the sights and sounds of the fair, get a bird's eye view on the Skyglider. Very few empty seats today. Will the bride wear white or silver down the aisle? That's a question many had today as Olympic silver medalist Tosh Kaiser and her fiancé Brian Brown tied the knot. New Center 13's Courtney Maxwell was there. Open about 10 minutes ago. The bride and one of her bridesmaids arrived at the church at 3.30 with their arms full. Tosh Kaiser getting ready for one of the biggest days of her life. Husband-to-be Brian Brown says he was more nervous when Tosh ran in Barcelona than he was on his wedding day. Here, you know, I'm very much a part of it, and I can control my own nerves now, but before, I just had to sit and watch. So, it's better now. Tosh's father, Fred Kaiser, says everything was under control before the ceremony. I'm pretty cool today, although I wonder how we're going to make it down the aisle. Uh, we were trying it last night, and we weren't gelling, so I, I thought maybe uh, if I did an overhand pass, or we might start working together. The guests arrived with wedding gifts. They signed the guest book and packed the church. And as you can see, the bride wore white. Natasha is not the only one getting married today. A very special wedding is taking place as we speak at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Courtney Maxwell is a guest at that wedding as well. Courtney, you introduced us to this lady a week ago, and boy, does she love the fair, right? She absolutely does. Today's a beautiful day for another wedding. Margot Boycourt and her husband-to-be, actually, they may be married as we speak. They're in the church right now. Chris Fox absolutely loved the fair. They come to the fair every day, every year. They even moved into a house six blocks away just so they could be close to the fair. The two were engaged two years ago at the fair. They met at the fair, were engaged two years ago. They dated the whole time they were at the fair, and today they've sealed that with wedding at the fair. Scott and Therese. That's great. Courtney, we'll be checking in with you just a little bit later. Check on the nuptials. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Scott? The Iowa waterfowl season just a couple of weeks away, and wildlife biologists are already looking ahead to the future. This week, the Department of Natural Resources is working on a project to help increase the wood duck population in Iowa. Joe Wilkinson reports. Just about the time these wood ducks work their way into range to be trapped with a rocket-powered net, something spooks them. Everything has to be just right before DNR wildlife worker Art Dodd trips the wires that lead from this nearby blind, a site he's baited with corn, waiting for a good number to cluster just under the rockets. Uh, as they come, I keep thinking, you know, okay, just a couple more steps and get your heads down and, and then something will happen. They'll fly off and, <laughs> and of course... Uh...